This is a video about orthogonal diagonalization of symmetric matrices, or just orthogonal diagonalization for short. There are three objectives. Determine when complex matrices can be orthonormally diagonalized. Determine when real matrices can be orthogonally diagonalized, and we'll explain the difference between orthogonal and orthonormal diagonalization. And then orthogonally diagonalize symmetric matrices. So we'll do some examples to show how to do that. This video starts in section two of these notes on diagonalization. We covered section one in a previous video. We'll start by defining a normal matrix to be an n by n matrix that satisfies this property. Theorem 2.1 here is the main theorem in this section about orthonormal diagonalization. In the book, there are several theorems that lead up to this theorem. And for the sake of time and simplicity, I'm skipping those theorems here, and I don't include the proof of this theorem, which relies on all those previous theorems. We are going to focus on a special case of this theorem, so I'm just going to state it here without proof. If A is an n by n matrix, then there is a unitary matrix U and a diagonal matrix D with the diagonal entries equal to the eigenvalues of A, such that A can be factored as U D U star, where U star is the adjoint of A. And this is true if and only if A is a normal matrix. So up here we saw the definition of a normal matrix, and it turns out that these matrices are identical to the matrices that can be factored like this, where U is a unitary matrix and D is a diagonal matrix. Moreover, the columns of U will be a set of orthonormal eigenvectors of A that form a basis for CN. Next, we'll define a symmetric matrix to be an n by n matrix with real entries, which we sometimes refer to simply as a real matrix, that satisfies the property that it's equal to its own transpose. Remember, a Hermitian matrix is equal to its own adjoint. Well, if A is a real matrix, then the adjoint of A is simply equal to a transpose, and so a symmetric matrix is simply a real Hermitian matrix. Next, we see that symmetric matrices have real eigenvalues. If A is symmetric, then it has real eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The proof is pretty straightforward. If A is symmetric, then it's Hermitian, as we just saw. Therefore, its eigenvalues are real. There's a theorem in the chapter on eigenvalues and eigenvectors that we went over in a previous video that says that Hermitian matrices have real eigenvalues, and the proof is in the book and in the video. So if A is symmetric, its eigenvalues are real because A is Hermitian. Now what about the eigenvectors? Well, let's say lambda is a real eigenvalue of A, and consider this equation. Well, remember, this is the equation that we solve to find the eigenvectors of A associated with lambda. And in particular, the solution set of this equation is the eigenspace of A for lambda. Well, since A and lambda are real, A minus lambda I is also real. And when we row reduce this matrix, row operations are not going to turn any of the entries in this matrix into complex numbers, which means that the solution vector x will also be real. And of course, x is an eigenvector associated with lambda, so all the eigenvectors of A are also real. Next, a couple more definitions. An n by n matrix A with real entries is orthogonal if this property is satisfied. A A transpose is equal to the n by n identity, and A transpose A is also equal to the n by n identity. Recall that unitary matrices satisfy a very similar property. U star U equals U U star equals the identity, again where U star is the adjoint of U. So an orthogonal matrix is simply a real unitary matrix. Then we come to the main definition of this section. An n by n real matrix A is orthogonally diagonalizable if there exists an orthogonal matrix P and a real diagonal matrix D such that A equals PDP transpose, which is equal to PDP inverse. Note that if A A transpose equals A transpose A equals the identity matrix, then A transpose is simply equal to A inverse. So you can think of an orthogonal matrix as a matrix whose transpose is equal to its inverse. And that's why down here, P transpose is identical to P inverse. Normally, when we would diagonalize A, we would factor it as PDP inverse. Well, since P inverse is equal to P transpose, which is simpler to compute than the inverse of a matrix, we generally write A as PDP transpose when we orthogonally diagonalize A. The next theorem says that if A is an n by n matrix, it's orthogonally diagonalizable if and only if it's symmetric. In other words, symmetric matrices are orthogonally diagonalizable and vice versa. 
Many textbooks only deal with real matrices, and the proof of this theorem in those textbooks tends to be pretty long because they don't develop the theorem that we just saw, that normal matrices are orthonormally diagonalizable. But since we have that theorem, this proof is pretty straightforward. If A is orthogonally diagonalizable as PDP transpose, where P is an orthogonal matrix and D is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues of A on the diagonal, well, A transpose is just PDP transpose transpose. Doing a little rearrangement with properties of matrix multiplication and transposes, we can see that the transpose of PDP transpose is just PDP transpose. It is its own transpose. This is A. So A transpose equals A. Therefore, A is symmetric. So we have one direction of this if and only if statement. If A is orthogonally diagonalizable, then it's symmetric. Conversely, if we assume A is symmetric, well, then it's normal. And by theorem 2.1 that we just saw, it's diagonalizable as u d u star, where u is a unitary matrix, and d is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues of a on the diagonal. Well, since a is symmetric, its eigenvalues and eigenvectors are real. Therefore, the columns of u are real vectors in Rn, and that makes u an orthogonal matrix, and d is also real, so by the definition of orthogonally diagonalizable, a is orthogonally diagonalizable. We can tie this all together with this special theorem called the spectral theorem for real matrices. The eigenvalues of a matrix are sometimes referred to as the spectrum of the matrix. There are lots of spectral theorems in different areas of math, so we have to be a little bit careful when we say the spectral theorem. So I've said the spectral theorem for real matrices to avoid confusion with the spectral theorem, say, for complex matrices or some other spectral theorem altogether. This one says an n by n symmetric matrix A has the following properties. It's got n real eigenvalues, counting multiplicities, which means there may not be n distinct eigenvalues, but the sum of the algebraic multiplicities of the eigenvalues will be equal to n. If lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then the geometric multiplicity of lambda is equal to the algebraic multiplicity of lambda. This means that A is diagonalizable. Number three says the eigenspaces of A are mutually orthogonal. Another way to say that is eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal. We saw number one as a separate theorem above. Number three we saw in a previous video on eigenvalues and eigenvectors when we considered Hermitian matrices. The eigenspaces of Hermitian matrices are mutually orthogonal. And if A is symmetric, then it is Hermitian. And then finally, A is orthogonally diagonalizable, which is the result from theorem 2.3. All right, now let's do a couple examples. Let's say we're given this matrix A and we want to orthogonally diagonalize it, if possible. Remember, A is only orthogonally diagonalizable if it is symmetric. Well, symmetric means A is equal to its own transpose, which we can see here. Well, what does that look like? Well, it's actually pretty easy to identify symmetric matrices. Let's write down A transpose for this matrix, and you'll see what I mean. Here's A transpose. We take the first row and make it the first column. 7 minus 4, 4, 7 minus 4, 4. The second row becomes the second column. Minus 4, 5, 0, minus 4, 5, 0. The third row, 4, 0, 9, becomes the third column, 4, 0, 9. And of course, A transpose is the same as A. Well, there's an even easier way to see that A is symmetric without writing down A transpose. All symmetric matrices have to follow this pattern. If you look at the main diagonal, the entries that are opposite each other across the main diagonal have to be equal. So these two, circled in blue, have to be the same as each other. They don't have to be the same as any other numbers in the matrix. They just have to equal each other. So minus 4 and 4 match. 4 and 4 match. 0 and 0 match. It doesn't matter what the diagonal entries are. They can be anything. But these entries that are across the main diagonal from each other have to be the same. So it's pretty easy to just identify a symmetric matrix by observation, and this is important if you're told to orthogonally diagonalize a matrix if possible. Since A is symmetric, it is possible, so we'll go through the steps and orthogonally diagonalize it. But it would actually be easier if this were not a symmetric matrix, and the answer would be simply, it's not possible because it's not symmetric. Okay, well since A is symmetric, we can go ahead and orthogonally diagonalize it. So how do we do that? Well, it's the same as diagonalizing a matrix with one extra step. Remember, to diagonalize a matrix, we find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the matrix. The eigenvectors go into the matrix P. The eigenvalues go on the diagonal of the matrix D. And we write A is PDP inverse. Well, now in this case, we have the extra condition that P is a unitary matrix. 
A unitary matrix, remember, has unit factors as its columns. So all we need to do is normalize the columns of P, and we have orthogonally diagonalized the matrix A. All right, for the sake of time, I skipped the steps of finding the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the matrix A. So there are three distinct eigenvalues for A, 13, 7, and 1 with the corresponding basis vectors for the eigenspaces here. Notice that the dot product of any pair of these three vectors is zero. Two times minus one is minus two, plus another minus two, so minus four plus four is zero. And we know that's true because A is symmetric. In other words, that has to be the case. Because if A is symmetric, it's Hermitian, and Hermitian matrices have the property that their eigenvectors are all orthogonal to each other. More specifically, eigenvectors from different eigenspaces or corresponding to different eigenvalues will be orthogonal to each other. But an orthogonal matrix is not just a matrix with orthogonal columns. The column vectors also have to be unit vectors. Okay, so that means we simply have to normalize these eigenvectors. So the norm of V1, we square each of the entries, take the square root to compute the norm. And then we'll define u1 to be v1 divided by its norm, and then u1 will be a unit vector. So the norm turns out to be 3 for all three of these eigenvectors, actually. So just take all the entries of the eigenvectors and divide them by 3 here. And now these are unit vectors. So if you were to square each entry here and add them all up and then take the square root, you'd get 1. Same for this one and this one. If we want to put these vectors into a matrix, since they're all multiples of one third, we can just factor the one third out, and then I've got integer values for the entries in the matrix. And then D is a diagonal matrix with the corresponding eigenvalues on the diagonal. So this is an eigenvector corresponding to 13. So since this is the first column, 13 has got to be the first entry on the main diagonal. This eigenvector corresponds to 7. This eigenvector corresponds to 1. And of course, A is equal to PDP transpose. So here is the orthogonal diagonalization of A. The wording of this next example is a little different. It says, find an orthonormal basis B for R4 consisting of eigenvectors of A and orthogonally diagonalize A. So it doesn't say if possible, which implies it must be possible, otherwise you couldn't do this question. We can check quickly though and see here's the main diagonal, which happens to be all fours, but that doesn't matter. These numbers could be anything. And then we look at the entries opposite each other across the main diagonal. These match, this one has to match this one, these two have to match, and then these two have to match. So this zero matches this one, this zero matches this one, but these could be fives and these could be zeros. These two don't have to match. This one has to match this one and this one has to match this one. The ones match and the zeros match. So A is indeed symmetric. If that seems too complicated, just write down the transpose of A and that also confirms that A is symmetric. Again, for the sake of time, I skipped the computations of the eigenvalues and the eigenspaces, but here they are. There are two eigenvalues, five and three, each with an algebraic multiplicity of two. Then the eigenspaces are here, and we can see that each eigenspace is two-dimensional, so the geometric multiplicities for each eigenvalue are also two. And we know that that must happen because of the spectral theorem, which tells us that the algebraic multiplicity is always going to be equal to the geometric multiplicity for any given eigenvalue. Now these down here are also equal to 2, which is the same as these up here, but that doesn't have to be the case. So these could be 1 each or 5 each, any number as long as they're equal to each other. They don't have to be the same as this number, but these numbers have to be equal to each other, 2 and 2, and these numbers down here also have to be equal to each other. All right, as before, we're going to take these vectors and normalize them. So I'll just label them for convenience, 1, 2, 3, 4 here, V1 through V4. And then we can almost do the norm by observation, square each entry here, and then add them up. Well, 1 plus 1. So I'll get 2, and then take the square root. So the norm of v1 is root 2, and I get the same number when I take the norm of the other three vectors as well. So they're all equal to each other. The norm is root 2. Divide each vector by its norm. So just divide each entry here and all of these by root 2, and I get these vectors u down here. And then here's my orthonormal basis. I just put those vectors into a set. Notice that if you take the dot product of this vector with any one of these, you'll get zero. If you take the dot product of this vector with itself, you'll get one because it's a unit vector. And the same with every other vector in the set. Every vector in the set is orthogonal to every other vector. In other words, the dot product will be zero. And if you take the dot product of a vector with itself, you'll get one because it's a unit vector and that's what orthonormal means.
Then to orthogonally diagonalize A, we just take these vectors, put them into a matrix, and then put the corresponding eigenvectors into D on the main diagonal. These two eigenvectors correspond to the eigenvalue 5, so we get a couple of 5s here. And then these two correspond to 3, and so the last two entries on the diagonal are 3. And of course, A is equal to PDP transpose, so we have orthogonally diagonalized A. And that finishes this relatively short video on orthogonal diagonalization. The main objective was number three here, where we orthogonally diagonalized symmetric matrices. And this is what you're going to have to do in the homework and perhaps on a quiz or an exam.